video we'll talk about a very important lemma called the crossing number lemma. Consider graph G embedded in a plane. Assume the graph has V vertices and E edges. The vertices of the graph are the points in the plane and the edges are straight line segments between them. A crossing is an inter intersection of two, vertices, two edges. The number of crossings is denoted by CR. Note that when uh, a number of edges pass through a common vertex or common crossing, the crossing is counted multiple times. In other words, the crossing is a number of pairs of edges where they intersect. We'd like to prove that this crossing number is at least this much. The proof of this lemma uses a very interesting and beautiful randomized argument, and it goes as follows. If we pick a parameter p, and we sample the vertices of this graph with probability p. In other words, for every vertex of the graph, we roll a dice or a coin, and we keep the vertex with probability p, and we delete it with probability 1 minus p. In the picture to the top, we had 10 vertices. In the sampled graph, we have only 5. In other words, half of the vertices have not been sampled. If you look at this picture, you will see the following observations. First of all, a vertex survives with probability p. This is the premise we begin with. For an edge to survive in the sample graph, both endpoints of that edge must be sampled. This edge does not survive because this vertex has not been sampled. However, edge v1, v2 survives because both v1 and v2 have been sampled. How about intersections? First, observe that an intersection will need to involve four vertices. In other words, if two edges share a common endpoint, they, then they are not considered to be intersecting. Thus, for an intersection to survive, all four vertices involved in that intersection must be sampled. This means an intersection survives with probability p to the 4. Observe how both of these calculations crucially use the fact that the probability of, uh, of a vertex surviving is independent of all the other probabilities. And thus, we can multiply the probabilities. This will tell us that if we count the expected number of vertices and the expected number of ridges and the expected number of crossings, we'll see the following. That in the sample graph, on average, we'll see v times p vertices, e times p squared edges, and cr times p to the 4 crossings. This is because of the linearity of expectations. The expected value is a linear function. And thus, we can add up the probability of uh, v1 surviving times the fact that it survives, and same for v2. And if we calculate this for all the vertices, we'll get that the expected number of vertices is v times p. The same argument follows for the edges. Observe that the probability of an edge surviving is not independent of a probability of another edge surviving. However, the expected value does not care about independence. And thus, we can derive the, these three observations. Keep these three observations in mind. Now we'll look at the general planar graph. Consider a general planar graph embedded in the plane. Assume it has V vertices and E edges. There is a theorem that says the number of edges in a planar graph is at most three times the number of vertices. In fact, can even prove a slightly better bound. Uh, I will not go into the proof of this lemma. However, you can use the Euler's theorem, which says v minus the number of edges plus the number of regions equals 2 to derive this inequality. This inequality will give us an easy bound on the number of crossings. And it says the number of crossings is at least e minus 3 times v. To see this, to see this bound, consider the following argument. Let's start with a graph that is not planar. Consider one intersection and then delete an edge that is adjacent to that intersection. This deletion reduces the number of edges by one, and it reduces the number of crossings by at least one. After repeatedly applying this operation for a number of times, we'll end up with a graph that is planar. In other words, it has no intersections. We can apply this operation at least e minus 3v times, because until the number of edges have been reduced to this number, the graph will not be planar. Each time we apply this operation, we reduce the number of edges by one and the number of crossings by at least one, 
and thus it follows that the number of crossings is at least e minus 3 times v. Now we go back to the previous picture. Every time I, we sample from the original graph and we get a sample graph, this inequality will hold in that sample graph. In other words, in the sample graph, we have that the number of crossings is at least the number of edges minus 3 times the number of vertices. Again, using the linearity of expectations, we can conclude that this inequality also holds for the expected values. In other words, the expected value of the crossings must be at least bigger than the expected number of ver edges minus 3 times the expected number of uh, vertices. And thus, we obtain this inequality. Now what remains to do is to do some math. Remember that in this inequality, we are free to pick the value of p. In other words, we are free to pick uh, the probability that we sample with. We have two general cases. The first case is when the graph is sparse. In other words, when the graph does not have too many edges. For example, if e is at most 4 times v. In this case, if you look at the, this formula, you see that this number is uh, at most zero, which is, of course, a lower bound of number of crossing. So in this case, the bound that we wish to prove trivially holds. Let's assume this is not the case. In other words, we have uh, at least four times v edges in the graph. We pick p to be four times v divided by e. Observe that this is at most one. In fact, this is strictly smaller than one, and thus it's a valid probability. By dividing both sides of this inequality that we derived from the previous slide by v to the p to the 4, we get to the following inequality. And then we plug in the value of p, and after simplification, we obtain that the number of crossing is at least e cubed divided by 64 times v squared. And thus, it, this proves our lemma.